let's get started. So transmission based precautions. Basically, we have three main to discuss in this one, which is airborne, droplet, and the contact precaution, right? Now, let's get started. Um, in all of them, how are we going to study in there is, we need to know about disease condition in all three, what disease is problem covering up in airborne droplet and contact, and also the PPE, what personal protective equipment required by the nurse to wear, and also if the patient needs to wear anything or not, or if the visitor needs to wear anything when they're going inside the patient room. And then the last I will talk about some special points for each of them precautions like something special you need to know about them, which they, which is the repeat question might be for your NCLEX exam as well. Um, so I will discuss all those things in here today. So watch this video until the end. And if you have any doubt after you watch the video, please let me know in the comment section below so I can help you right away. Now, in the airborne, Basically, this is for, um, these precautions are basically for the patients. If someone get infected um, with the airborne condition, so what happened in here is that infection basically spread by the tiny droplets that remain suspended in the air and travel the long distances. So what happened is when somebody inhale, uh, in the same environment where the infected person is there of the inborn, the person can easily get the same droplet nuclei even with the inhalation as well in the airborne. Remember, not in the droplet the person will get infected with the inhalation. This is mainly when someone coughs, sneeze, or someone talk in front of you and that drop is goes to the, towards to the next person from an infected person. Um, this is the main difference for the how someone get infected between the airborne and the droplet. But in the airborne, if I'm standing right now, let's say if I'm standing right now in a room and if I'm in the same environment where the other person infected with the airborne condition, even if I take a deep breath or simple uh, if I'm inhaling right now, definitely I'll get infection at the same time. Now, this is the meaning of the airborne. Why do we need to get the airborne precaution for someone. Now let's talk about what diseases to cover in the airborne. The easy way to remember is by the mnemonics always because there are a lot of disease condition in the airborne droplet in the contact. So I highly, highly recommend it. Always make a mnemonics to remember something. If you have your own mnemonics, feel free to use the same mnemonic what you have. But if you never heard about this topic before, you are the new person in here, I highly recommend to use this mnemonics because it's easy to remember the disease condition. Now, disease condition in the airborne, I'm gonna use the word, my chicken has TB, because it's more easy to remember. Now, with the M will be measles. Another name of measles here will be rubiola and chicken c will be chicken pox which is densella and h here will be disseminated herpes zoster herpes zoster so another name will be here is shingles and the t will be tuberculosis in this case right now remember when someone has a chicken pox or varicella or they have disseminated herpes zoster which is shingles these two patients we also need to use the contact precaution at the same time along with the airborne precaution as well this is very important right now it's only four conditions as you can see in this list so i believe it's very easy to remember in this with this mnemonic if you remember with this way now let's talk about what ppe the nurse needs to wear and the patient needs to wear right so here, the nurse need to use a special type of mask, which has a special filters, right? Which we call as N95 mask. Another name of N95 mask is respirator mask. That is another name of the N95 mask. Does the nurse needs to wear any other PPE? Well, the answer is it depends. Uh, definitely, you will use a standard precaution along with the airborne precaution. If you're going for some procedure or any other uh, the care task, what you're doing with your client. So it depends what you're doing with your patient. But if you're not performing anything in there, you're just walking in there to check up on the patient, you only need to wear the N95 mask in this case. Now, remember the special thing about the, the airborne precaution is negative pressure wound. These patients, 
we really need to put them into the negative pressure negative pressure room once they arrive into your triage area and you already even if it's a suspected case you already know that this person might have maybe one of these condition you put the patient right away as soon as possible in a private room by themselves in the special room which we call negative pressure room now why we call this as a negative pressure room because in this room there is like a special type of filters we have and that filters we basically call HIPAA filters and that filters they do have the capacity of the suctioning power which is about 6 to 12 mm of mercury they can easily suck all those uh, the germs particles what we have in the air um, so the other person doesn't really get them um, so we put them in the negative pressure room in here because the as I mentioned the air won't spread through the inhalation so we need to put them in the special room in here now the patient needs to wear only surgical mask which is your regular mask what you see every day in hospitals or any site where you're working um, so surgical mask they needs to wear remember not inside the room they need to wear the mask when they're outside the room just in case the patient is outside the room for any procedure you need to give them the n95 mask in here now here's a quick question for all of you and I will wait for the answers in the comment section below and I will also tell you the right answer in the comment section below as well so the question is if I ask you a question um, one of the patient just arrived now in the emergency and you are the working there as a nurse now and you have noticed the patient has a suspected symptoms of the tuberculosis so what you will do first in that case now in this scenario i'll give you the first option is place the client in the negative pressure room the second option i'll give it to you here is give the client the surgical mask to cover the mouth and nose third option is ask the patient to wash your hands and the fourth option i'll give it to you give it to you is call physician right away so let's see who know the answer for this question and put your answer in the comment section below. So this way I know everybody's studying together with me or not. And now definitely that's all about the airborne precaution. We do not miss anything into here about the airborne. But again, if you have any question about the airborne precaution, feel free to use the comment section below. So I know that uh, what question to address then if I see something in the comment then. Now let's compare this one with the droplet precaution at the same time. So in the droplet precaution, what happened is, as I said, it basically spread the infected person cough, sneeze, even the talk with someone. Basically through the mucus, uh, it will be there. Now, which condition comes under the droplet precaution? To remember them, the easy mnemonic is Spider-Man, right? So let's see Spider-Man together with me. And I'll also tell you which one is the most important out of these that you might get in your NCLEX examination as well. Now, the first one in the S, remember we have three S in total in here. So we have sepsis, scarlet fever, and streptococcal pharyngitis. If you cannot read this properly, I highly recommend it as I said earlier, download the document, which I'm gonna put in the description box below as well. You will find my all the notes related to this video is there. Now, in the Spider-Man, the P will be 3P we need to address here, which is parvovirus B19, pneumonia, and pertussis. In the I, we have influenza, and with the D, we have diphtheria. With the E, we have epiglottitis. With the R, we have two conditions in there, which is rubella and RSV, right? Remember, this is rubella here. The one we discussed earlier, that was rubiola, the one we discussed in the airborne. Now, with the M, we have three conditions back again, which is mumps, meningococcal meningitis, and meningeal pneumonia. The last one, which is AN, which I'm gonna say is the this one, adenovirus. AN will be adenovirus in this case. Now, you might be thinking this is a lot, how to remember all these conditions for your exam. So I highly recommend that if you cannot remember all of them, at least remember for sure 
is pneumonia, pertussis, sepsis, and then the fourth is influenza, the fifth is rubella, and six is RSV, seven is mumps, and that's all, right? But still try your best. If you remember the mnemonic, that will be awesome. Now, is there any special points we need to cover in the droplet precaution? Yes. Um, the first is, I would say, is the uh, in the special precaution, special points, let's talk about the PPE, sorry, right? So what PPE the nurse needs to wear here is surgical mask. So you only need a surgical mask when you're providing care to the patient with the droplet precaution. And as I said, you use plus standard precaution as needed right now does the patient need to wear any mask here the answer is no if the patient is by himself or herself in a private room but if the patient is cohorting the room with some other patient at the same time and the distance between the bed is also less than three feet in that case and you need to check the symptoms of the patient and if the patient has the active symptom the antibiotic treatments have not been started yes then yes definitely give the surgical mask to the patient as well but if the patient already symptoms subsided and the treatment already started more than 24 to 48 hours and there's no really symptom in there then definitely they don't need to wear the mask as well but the nurse still need to wear the mask when you're providing the care to the patient now remember if the patient is cohorting the room with another patient in that case you need to make sure the door leaves open not the closed but three feet distance needs to be at least between the two beds of the patient at that time. Now, um, the another thing I wanna talk here is also about, because I remember one time, one of the student nurse asked me this question, does the windows needs to be closed or open if they're sharing the room together? Well, the windows needs to be closed, remember that in this case. Now, this is all about the droplet precaution. There's nothing much in here. Let's quickly move on to the contact precaution as well. In the contact precaution, why do we use the contact precaution? Just to prevent the spread of infectious agent, which can be through direct or the indirect contact with the patient or with the environment, right? Now, what conditions we cover up in here? We have lots of conditions here as well. And again, as I said, to make it easy, some mnemonics is in here so like mrs v is the first mnemonic plus hepatitis a i would say just uh, join along with it so mrs v hepatitis a and then i'm going to talk about the v chips after what the v chips look like so let's see the mrs v first mrsa r will be respiratory infection S will be skin infection. Now, in skin infection, I'm going to break down the skin infection into the V chips. So, the V chips is basically the breakdown of the skin infection. Um, so, V will be varicella zoster, C will be cutaneous diphtheria, H will be herpes simplex, I will be vertical, P will be pediculosis, and the S will be scalis. Um, also one more thing i know lots of students they get confused here also when they see the actual question in the ntex exam remember if they give you condition respiratory viral you need to put in the droplet but if it's a respiratory infection then use the contact in this case now the w stands after the missus the w will be bone infection e will be any enteric infection but the most common tested in the exam is c diff and remember for C. diff patient, you always wash your hands with soap and water. Do not use the sanitizer or the alcohol rub because the spore will not be killed. And you really need to wash your hands with the soap and water after caring with the patient with the C. diff. Another important question, I would say. Now, in the next E is eye infection. A uh, common example is the conjunctivitis. And that's all about the disease condition now what ppe the nurse needs to wear here and any special points we need to remember so let's talk about that the ppe for the contact precaution is i'm just going to write down here is uh, gloves and gowns remember the nurse always needs to wear gloves 
and gown when you're providing the care for the patient with the contact precaution. Um, but definitely standard precaution as well if needed. Um, but the gloves and gowns is the most important which you have to have to pick up the right answer in there when you find any of these disease condition in your NCLEX question in your exam. Now, um, does the patient need to wear here anything? The answer is not, but make sure you do teach the patient how to do the good hand washing as well. And even the visitors also, they need to know before they come in contact with the client. And the special points, another one about the contact precaution, I would say it's exactly other point is same as the, the last of the point, which we discussed here, the droplet. Um, just in case if you're joining two patients together or cohorting someone together with the contact precaution. You need to make sure again, three feet at least distance between two beds and make the door open as well at that time. Now, that's all the information about the transmission-based precaution main topic, which is airborne droplet contact. But the video is still not over here yet, okay? Because I'm gonna teach you something really interesting here which i also find really interesting as well that you know you're never gonna forget about this information believe me um if you learn it this way about the donning and doffing right so let's um check the most interesting uh thing here about the donning and doffing because i have seen when i work as an educator before even uh, in some of the sites and even when i see the students and nurses come with me for the coaching classes Lots of time, you know, we get confused um, how to put the PPA on in what sequence and then how to took it off, right? Um, so if you are such a student as well or the nurse um, and you are thinking you forget about that, I highly recommend it. Use this method. You will never forget about it. Um, so donning and doffing the PPE. Now donning means how to put it on and how you put it on i'm going to give you like imagination story here today okay so imagine you are the nurse uh what you are the nurse working somewhere as an rm today um and you're about to get ready today before you leave the house right so how do you get the ready when you get when you get up in the morning before your shift definitely you go and get the shower first right after you get the shower you put your clothes on and everything in there so that will be the gown so because you put the gown on first clothing and everything before you do anything after that now after you took the shower everything you put your clothes on which will be equivalent to the gown then the next step is you look at your face um, if you need to do wear any makeup or cream or anything sunscreen or whatever before you leave the house you do something on your face that you can remember with the word mask because you do something in here right and then the next imagination is before you leave the house where you sit in the car right or the transportation which you're taking to go to the work you put your goggles on on something before you leave the house right so that is something the face shield or the goggles you can remember it now definitely um just have a nice imagination you are already in the winter season maybe at that time so you so feel cold outside. So before you reach at the work, you put the gloves on and everything and make yourself warm before you reach the work. Now, how to do the doffing? So how you basically to cure all the PPEs off in what sequence, the so doffing. So let's talk about doffing. So now imagine you finish your nursing shift today, you come back to the home, and now when you come back to the home, before you open the door, you remove your glove first, right? So this will be the gloves. And the second thing is when you just enter in the house, you wanna put your glasses somewhere at the same time before you go to the shower, right? So that will be the goggles or the face shield. Then the next one, definitely before you're jumping into the shower or the bathroom, you took your clothes off, which is your gown, you can imagine. Now, definitely after you took all the shower and everything, you lastly, you want to look after your all the face before you go to the bed. So that will be the mask. I hope you find this imagination story a little bit interesting because I find it really interesting when you try to remember the donning and doffing because you're going to remember this thing for a long time with this imagination story. Now, let me know in the comment section how do you find it as well. 
Um, now I think that's all about for this video today and I'll meet you guys in my next video very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video.